traversing through the fictional ancient world, unexpectedly possessing a randomly obtained item every day and a bag that accommodates all things. The bag of all things can be upgraded, and the quantity and quality of items obtained will also increase. Although Deng Hua has received such powerful assistance, in this world, he still must be cautious and cautious, like walking on thin ice. He was able to make ends meet from the beginning, to revitalize his family, to build new cities, and so on. With the passage of time, this fictional ancient world forced him to constantly become stronger, otherwise he would not be able to survive. Until he was crowned emperor. Chapter 1 Through time, obtain the bag of everything and get a bronze sword. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Deng Hua is researching an important academic topic that involves cutting-edge technologies and future development directions in his field. As a top student from a prestigious university, he has considerable research experience and profound theoretical foundation in this field. Deng Hua is 1.8 meters tall and has a well-proportioned figure. Due to exercise, he has many muscle lines, a straight appearance, and a pair of sharp eyes. He always dresses appropriately and behaves appropriately, leaving a smart and polite impression on people. At this moment, he was carefully looking at the materials in the project, but suddenly a strong light engulfed him. When Deng Hua opened his eyes again, he looked around in terror and found himself in a dilapidated rural family. The walls of the house have been mottled and fallen off, the ground is covered in dust and dirt, and the furniture is also rudimentary. Deng Hua's surprise and fear were indescribable, as he felt as if he was in a world completely different from modern society. Deng Hua suddenly felt a cool breeze at his feet, and when he looked down, a mouse was running quickly past his feet. He let out a scream of fear and quickly jumped up. When he landed again, he found that his body seemed to have lost a lot of weight and his muscles had disappeared, making him feel very weak. Deng Hua looked at the big mouse in front of him in horror, feeling that it was stronger than him. Sure enough, no matter how much mouse meat there is, few people dare to eat it. The pestis broke out too many times in ancient times. Deng Hua looked at his clothes in horror and found that they were in tattered condition, with the fabric severely worn out and almost falling apart. His fingers lifted a wrinkled piece of fabric and found that it had lost its original soft texture, becoming rough and rough. He lifted his hand and found that the skin on it had become dark, with rough and uneven patterns, completely different from the fair and delicate hands he had before. He quickly touched his face and was surprised to find that the skin on his face had become equally rough, as if it had lost its previous shine and tenderness. Deng Hua reacted with horror that he had traveled back to ancient times. His eyes widened, his face turned pale, and he murmured to himself, Where is this? How could I inexplicably travel to this place? Deng Hua felt very confused. He tried to recall his journey, but everything became blurry and chaotic. At this moment, Deng Hua saw a woman in her late forties walking out of the kitchen on one side of the house. Her face was covered in the marks of time, but she still maintained an inexplicable kindness. The woman held a bowl of steaming congee and smiled when she saw Deng Hua. Hua, are you hungry? Come and eat now. At this moment, his body's physiological response was uncontrollable and he was so hungry that his stomach growled and he couldn't help but swallow his saliva. He was just about to wonder how he could eat a bowl of porridge. Suddenly, memories of the original world flooded into his mind. Originally, this kind woman was the mother of this body, and there was also a frail and sickly sister named Deng Yun in the family. Mother Deng would not know that her son, whom she knew before her, had changed into another person. She put away kanji and turned to the kitchen to get another bowl of kanji. Deng Hua knew from his memory that this was sent to his weak and sickly sister Deng Yun. He immediately followed up. Mom, let me serve it. Deng's mother touched Deng Hua's head with satisfaction. Okay, hee hee, be careful not to get hot. Come to Deng Yun's room. Deng Yun lay in bed, her face pale and weak, her eyes lifeless and empty. My mother gently wiped the sweat off her forehead, so meticulous and meticulous, 
as if worried that not wiping it clean enough would cause harm to Deng Yun. Deng Hua couldn't help feeling a pang of sadness in his eyes, filled with love and helplessness. Deng Yinxiang pretended to smile and wanted his mother not to worry too much, but the pain in her eyes could not be concealed. Deng Hua felt powerless and unable to help his sister escape this pain, which made him even more distressed. After dinner, Deng Hua, who had traveled through time, couldn't help but secretly make up his mind. Since I have come to this body and have his memories, then I must live a good life at home. He walked out of the door and suddenly a small cloth bag suspended in front of him. Deng Hua looked at the small cloth bag in front of him, feeling a bit surprised. He reached out to take the bag, and suddenly a voice came into his head. The binding of the All Things bag was successful. The binding gift package is being distributed, with a body strengthening version and a brain strengthening version. The detailed explanation of the body strengthening and brain strengthening Krypton Gold version immediately appeared in his mind, as the name suggests, which is to inject money to strengthen the body and brain. The All Things bag randomly generates items for the bound person every day. On the first day, the random item is a bronze sword, which has been stored in the All Things bag. The bag of All Things has storage space, and with the injection of gold upgrading, the space will also increase, and daily randomly generated items will also improve their quality. Deng Hua opened the bag of all things and indeed saw a bronze sword. He excitedly picked up his sword and tried to wave it, feeling the weight and sharpness of the blade, but now his strength is too weak to use it 100%. Now that he had obtained the golden finger bag, Deng Hua began to calmly contemplate how to survive in this world and how to help his family live a better life. He is very clear about the value and significance of this bag of all things, but he also knows that this matter must be kept confidential. Although his family trusts him very much, this matter is too unbelievable for them. They won't believe it in the short term. He began to seriously consider how to protect this precious discovery, while also feeling excited and hopeful because he knew what changes and opportunities this discovery would bring. He looked at the bronze sword in his hand and received it in the bag of all things. If you can't control it now, selling it to improve your family's life is the best choice. So the money for selling this sword also needs to be reasonable and well-founded, otherwise it's difficult to explain. He suddenly remembered that the owner of this body often went to the mountains to dig wild vegetables and sell money to support his family. He could use this reason to evade it, and he could also explore the world every day and learn some ways to get rich. After making up his mind, he bid farewell to his mother under the guise of digging wild vegetables. Based on his memory, Deng Hua headed towards Jingyang town along a dirt road and encountered a village driver driving along the way. He hitchhiked as usual. Finally arrived in Jingyang town 20 minutes later. Jingyang town is a small town located at the foot of a mountain with tall and thick city walls and magnificent city towers embedded above the city gate. There is a spacious main street in the center of the town, flanked by antique shops and residential buildings. With a superior geographical location surrounded by green mountains and lush trees on the mountain, it forms a natural barrier, making the town feel particularly quiet and peaceful. The town is widely recognized as divided into three areas, namely the poor area in the west of the town, the wealthy area in the east of the town, and the central government and commercial area. The houses on the west side of the town are relatively rudimentary, mostly made of brick and wood structures, and are mostly inhabited by ordinary farmers and workers. The streets are narrow and densely populated, often smelling unpleasant odors, and some vendors are hawking along the street. The east side streets of the town are relatively spacious, surrounded by ornate shops and residential buildings with exquisite carving techniques. The residents here are mostly wealthy merchants, literati, and officials from the town, who live a prosperous life and enjoy a high dot quality life. The city gate is bustling with people coming and going, with markets and wealthy merchant carriages, it's really lively. After entering the town, Deng Hua found a pawn shop on the east side of the town. He took out a bronze sword from a hidden corner and wrapped it inside his tattered clothes. Although it cannot be completely covered, 
at least it will not be easily discovered by people. Finally, Deng Hua stood at the entrance of the pawn shop, looking at the furnishings inside. The shop was filled with furniture, ceramic utensils, and books made of precious wood. I feel like I can't touch anything in this world just by randomly selecting any one of them. The shop assistant glanced disdainfully at Deng Hua's shabby clothes as he walked in, and said fiercely. What does a beggar come to the pawn shop for? Is this where you should come? Deng Hua bravely walked up to the shop assistant. Hello, I'm here to pawn things. The shop assistant couldn't see anything worth pawning on Deng Hua's body, and then said with a hint of mockery. Hee hee, we don't accept slaves here. You should go somewhere else and take a look. Deng Hua carefully took out the bronze sword wrapped in his clothes. I'm here to pawn this. Chapter 2 Sell the bronze sword and get 8 liang of gold. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. De Ko Lois ARA Trong Quatrin Lay Text. Chapter 3 Purchasing Supplies and Medicines, Saving Sister Deng Yun. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. De Ko Lois ARA Trong Quatrin Lay Text. Chapter 4 Deng Yun's condition improves, randomly obtain a box of instant noodles. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. De Ko Lois ARA Trong Quatrin Lay Text. Chapter 5 Revitalization of Deng Zhuang Village Plan, Selling Instant Noodle Boxes in the City. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. De Ko Lois ARA Trong Quatrin Lay Text. Chapter 6 Selling at a low price to earn people, Deng Hua's next steps. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. De Ko Lois ARA Trong Quatrin Lay Text. Chapter 7 Spring Breeze Restaurant Negotiations for Cooperation, Deng Hua's Stakes. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. De Ko Lois ARA Trong Quatrin Lay Text. Chapter 8 the Value of Seasoning in Deng Hua's Purpose. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. De Ko Lois ARA Trong Quatrin Lay Text. Chapter 9 Achieving the Purpose and Obtaining a Carriage. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. De Ko Lois ARA Trong Quatrin Lay Text. Chapter 10 Distribution of Materials and Gathering the People's Livelihoods in the Village. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. De Ko Lois ARA Trong Quatrin Lay Text. 